Okay, I think we're good. Welcome to the Drumming Career Podcast. This is episode number three, so I think I'm starting to form a habit. Um, the past two guests have been amazing. If you didn't see those, make sure you check out joegaretty.com slash podcast, and you can see them. Um, very insightful, informative interviews with two really great workers. And we have another one today I'm really excited about. Uh, this week's guest is a drummer, a songwriter, a beat maker, a producer. He has performed and or recorded with artists that include Ingrid Michelson, El King, A Great Big World, and many, many more. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome my buddy, Elliot Jacobson. Elliot. Hey, man. There What's he up, is. Joe? Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, too. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Thanks for being here. Yeah. So where are you coming at us from today? So I'm in uh, in Manhattan. I'm in lower Manhattan in New York. Um, been here riding out the whole thing. Um, you know, the whole time you've been you haven't left New York since the whole pandemic happened. Yeah, yeah. Just been down here. How about you? Where are you at these days? I am in Buffalo, New oh, York, nice. a little bit, uh, a little bit west of you guys. Um, but I mean, we we got a lot of the same stuff. We're in the same state. We got a lot of the the lockdowns and things mm -hmm. like that. And so everybody's doing the best we can and to get through it. Um, but I just, um, I imagined what it must be like to be in New York when all this stuff was going. Especially in the beginning, it must have been really scary, huh? It was, yeah. I, I mean, you know, we went got into the thick of it pretty quickly uh you know and then um it was pretty dark you know and i think the benefit or the silver lining of all that is just that like being able to understand it and have a unique experience with it uh was something that now you know carrying on into however long this is going to go it's like now we sort of know how to do things and what not to do and um Obviously, it's, it was a big price to pay to get to that point, but having some good perspective is super valuable right now when everything is just crazy and there's a lot coming at you, you know, and um, so I'm at least thankful for that. And, you know, New York is still, a lot of people left. There was a big, like, mass um, sort of exit. Um But there's a lot of resilience and there's a lot, there's a lot of restaurants still here. There's a lot of you know, people still walking around outside. I'm walking my dog every day, you know, for like an hour at least. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely, uh, it's, it's a weird time for everybody, but at least like going through that and coming out the other end has been, you know, like something positive. You're stronger for it, right? We're all yeah. stronger for it. Right? Yeah, yeah. So where are you? I know that we have a little bit of a hometown connection. Where are you from originally? Originally I'm from Houston, Texas grew up there like basically up to like middle school uh and then moved to buffalo new york yes <laughs> nice similar climates makes very perfect. similar just a continuous like straight line you know and how old were you when you moved to buffalo um i was a i was about 13 for uh i think 13 14 yeah and did you like stay in buffalo for your formative year i mean when did you leave buffalo um, I left Buffalo to go to college to come to New York. Uh, so, you know, basically like through middle school and high school, I was in Buffalo. Um, and, you know, now like I still have family in Buffalo and, and I have, uh, you know, some, some family in Miami too. Uh, and just a lot of friends still in Texas. So, you know, gotcha. uh, like a little spread out, but, um, yeah, I mean, I still, you know, my mom's in Buffalo, so when things are normal, I'm going back there, you know, a little bit to visit. She comes here to visit too, so. Great, so you're gonna go, <clears throat> come to Buffalo, put on some weight, put on some few pounds. You know where all the, all the good food is. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, so cool, so you're, now did you start, were you playing in Buffalo, or when did you start playing drums? Yeah, I got into drums, um, like around sixth grade, so like right before I moved to Buffalo, I started playing. And then when I was in Buffalo, um, you know, that's when things really got like kind of focused and serious. You know, I was I was playing in, in middle school, I was playing in high school, uh, like the jazz 
jazz band stuff, whatever they had, I was in. There was like a, a percussion ensemble. There was a hit orchestra thing. There was a concert band. Um, and then I was playing drums like in bands with everybody in high school that I could, you know, get get with. And um, I was usually the youngest guy. Like I was as a freshman coming in, like I was they're like, oh, there's a drummer. You know, you know, Buffalo is it's kind of a smaller community. So it's like, all right, this guy, you know, he's the drummer. Well, let's let's put him to work. So I was in like everybody's band and everyone's like friends band and just, you know, that that was a that was good for me, I think. What was like the, the year, circa the year that this was uh, happening? Um so, so I graduated high school two thousand two. Okay. So all this was like like 97, wow, to, to, to 2002, pretty much, was like the Buffalo years. Gotcha. Well, that was exactly when I left Buffalo. That was oh, right, okay. Yeah. It mm -hmm. was right around, well, I was probably here around 98 and all that, and then I went to Boston and, mm -hmm. then, uh, and then moved to New York in 2002. Yeah. And then you, did you leave Buffalo around that time as well? I left Buffalo around 2006. Okay. Yep. So... And then, you know, in college, I, I started playing with Ingrid, you know, so I met her on Staten Island. I went to school on Staten Island. She's from Staten Island. So, you know, who, who would think that there's like a utopia of music on, on Staten Island? Um, usually you think Manhattan or Brooklyn, you know, or, or, or the Bronx or something. But like, you know, there was like a little scene of like singer songwriters, stand up comedians that were sort of like hanging out at like, this one strip where there was like a coffee shop and a bar and like a restaurant and then like a sports club or something and i would end up there just hanging out and like again it was you know staten island is kind of a small town vibe so it's like when ingrid needed a drummer i was like the drummer pretty much and you know um she, uh, just to like not to interrupt you but if yeah. anybody watching it doesn't know he mentions Ingrid. He's talking about Ingrid Michelson. And at that time that you met Ingrid, was she already on her way uh, as far as like her career wise, or she was just starting off in Staten Island? Totally starting off just playing open mics was and like, yeah, 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 yeah. Very like, you know, there's this girl, she's a singer songwriter, sounds like Nora Jones. Uh, Cause like Nora Jones was the frame of reference then for anyone who was female playing piano, you know, that wasn't um, Britney Spears or, or yeah <laughs> yeah and uh you know like she had a bass player with her you know Chris Kupner who's from Staten Island also and still is with her and you sure. know forever and and um yeah it was like she's trying to you know put a band together there was nothing there was nothing like an audition it wasn't like oh this is Ingrid Michaelson who's been making records or you know very like ground up grassroots just Hey, let's play together. Oh, this feels good. Cool. You know, that's great. So I yeah. love it because you were along for the ride. Like you, you were uh, starting in the, like you're talking about in these little places in Staten Island. And then you got to go and do, along with her when she shot to stardom. That had to be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, uh, it was amazing to like see and be a part of something that was literally just starting from scratch and then you know we had like a, a little bit of a like a success coming from myspace like from some no being noticed there that's how her manager found her and then we were you know we went from like selling out the bitter end in manhattan you know to with like her friends and family pretty much just coming through right. to like you know there's a line out the door uh of the living room and like we can't even get into our to get into the stage and we're like, what is going on? Oh, she had a placement on Grey's Anatomy. So people know who she is now. And it just, it escalated, you know, and, and really lucky that she, uh, you know, she's like a loyal person and, and really like wanted to keep us on and, and bring us into recording sessions when it was like new producers and they were, you know, they had their guys and girls that they wanted. And she was like, nope, I got my band, try them out first, you know, so that was, that's all her. I mean, we were all like rising to the occasion and, and evolving with her and her musical sensibilities and, and becoming better musicians on our own. But really, like, 
I'm so grateful that she made those conscious decisions along the way to keep us there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Cause a lot of people don't, you know, right, I mean, right. and throughout history, I was just reading, uh, have you read Liberty DeVito's book? At no, all? but I really want to, I follow it's, Liberty and I want to check that it's out. It's great. You got to check it out. And he talks about even when, you know, with Billy Joel, how, uh, I think um, they were talking, you know, with some of the producers that wanted to um, get rid of his band and, and replace him with Elton John's band, mm. you know, and Billy was said, absolutely not, not going to do it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's my band. This is the sound and that's the way it goes. So that's very cool. How long were you with Ingrid um, before she started to get that that sort of notoriety? Well, there's like different stages of it, but I think really, you know, I was still, I was still in college or I was just graduating college. So maybe it was like, maybe I started playing with her around 2008 or something or 2007 even. And then slowly, um, you know, like, well, wait, maybe before, no, that's right, 2007. Yeah, so somewhere around there, it was it was probably just a couple of years and then really like things started escalating. And then, you know, when, when I was out of college and like trying to like pick up a temp work in between tours with her, you know, trying to like, okay, how do I like become a, a pro drummer when there's not like tour, 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 you know, it's like, she's still getting started so there was this like awkward phase where we would do like two weeks with Dave Matthews band. And then I would be like in my Brooklyn apartment being like, I got to like go walk dogs to, to like pay my $500 rent or, you know, I've been there brother. Yeah, I know yeah. that once you get off, off the road, especially for a while. And even if you do have gigs in town, everybody thinks you're on the road. So nobody calls you for the gigs in town. And then you're, you're sitting there struggling, wondering how you're going to pay the rent that month, you know? The, yeah. Right and the, that's when, the, right. And that's when the struggle began, you know, it was like, it, but then, you know, I'd say like a few, a few, a couple albums later, maybe that's when we actually like had the hit single that was like on the radio. So it was like sort of indie, you know, queen of indie music at the time. And then, you know, from like placements and, and getting no, noticed on, you know, her, her music was on television shows a lot. So that's sort of where we we got the audience was building for the shows and the tours were getting bigger and then when the, she got a, a top 40 song you know it was like okay now we're we're like playing bigger places and we're playing like two or three nights in a row and like you know um it was a few it was a few years but it just i mean at this point man you know it's it's a blur because it was it was like a steady thing. It just, everything like ran into each other. There was not like, um, it was like, we're making an, an album. Okay, now we're going on tour. Okay, now we're making an album. And then you look back and you're like, wow, like that, <laughs> that happened. But um, what yeah. was her, what was the song that broke for her that, uh, that really put her on the top 40? The, the song is called uh, Girls Chase Boys. Okay. It, yeah. All and right. Was, I remember when that, that came, that, was, that happened after... Um, you and I met on the road um, with, uh, I was out with Moby and you were out with Ingrid. And that, so that was even before the Girls Chase Boys, yeah? I, I'm positive it was, yeah. yeah. That, are you talking about, I remember a 9.30 club show? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yep. I was thinking about this the other day and you guys had the late show and we had the early show. And we like, my band, like the Ingrid band, you know, we were like, I don't know. We were definitely in party mode of like, we're enjoying tour and we're just like really like the thing about the Ingrid band in the beginning, especially was that we were all, we're all like really sweet, you know, normal people, but we would really rage hard with each other. Like we would go out and party um, kind of like college style. It was, it's a little embarrassing to talk about, but like, that's, that's how we were. So I remember watching you play and we were just losing our minds being like, Oh my God, Moby has so many hits. Like we know all of these songs and we were just rocking out and we all went out after, I think, right? Like we were hanging or something. Did we, this is, this is foggy to me. I think that members maybe of the band went out. Yeah, there was definitely some uh, inner hanging afterwards. I don't, okay. I, again, like you said, it's all a blur, but I, I remember, um, I remember the show, I remember the club, I remember meeting you 
and uh and listening to your sound check when we first got there and stuff and uh yeah. and then we met up again at the i think it was the yamaha drum thing right wasn't there a yamaha drum hang yes yes i saw like a random picture from that the other day too like in it was like a facebook thing or something but yeah that's right yeah hey, right that's when we, yeah. we um started talking again um since that time and then you guys were already rocking you were touring with her and um and flying and taking off and uh okay so you're doing all that stuff and like I, to me this is a trip because um you know that's like kind of hitting the jackpot when you come up with the band i think that's the best way to do it you know i i'm thankful but i was kind of the guy that got hired afterwards to, you know what i mean so to actually be a, a part of the journey is just amazing to me because you guys really went from the playing those empty places on staten island to like playing all over the world right all over television you guys yeah. were you absolutely huge so that that's really cool that had to be a trip it was yeah for sure okay so now you've been with ingrid for a while and uh things are going great and you start well you tell me what i know you started working with some other people in a lot of capacities what what wound up happening there yeah like <clears throat> you know i was um like in a natural way kind of meeting other songwriters and other musicians and then getting asked to play with them and you know like I was just trying to gig anyway like any New York uh musician so I was trying to network myself and kind of do whatever I could you know eat cold emails craigslist like at the time facebook or uh myspace you know I was messaging people and I got you know I met a lot of different artists and I was I was working a lot sort of in the indie music scene. And then I think playing with Ingrid was good because um, I would meet the producers that were working with her and they would hire me for other stuff. Um, and so I, I, I decided like, all right, I'm gonna own, I'm gonna try to own this like session drummer guy, but also I don't wanna be the guy that's just has the most gigs. I want to be like, I want people to feel like I'm their drummer when I'm with them. And you know, if if that means like I have to prioritize certain things over other things, like if, if I say yes to a gig, I'm there. It, it doesn't matter if something else comes up that's bigger. If there's like a scheduling conflict, if someone has me hold a date and then something comes up that wants to take me, you know, I'll, okay, I have to have a conversation. You know, you subbed for me with Ingrid at, at one point too. But I think, and I don't know what was going on in twice. my life, but I know that twice. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, things, things do happen, but I was always trying to be, you know, keep my priorities straight with people while I was, you know, putting myself out there. Um, but yeah, I started, started doing more session work. I started playing with, touring with a few other artists that were sort of in the, the scene or like once or twice or three times removed from the people I was playing with. And it was just kind of, you know, spiraled out of control you know <laughs> yeah well yeah. um getting back to the to the ingrid situation you were um as a member of the band you were actually like a contributing songwriter right well in the beginning with ingrid it was really loose it was like she would come in with a, a an idea or a song and you know into the practice space and be like i want this to sound like death cab or i want this to sound like you know whatever she was kind of listening to and trying to like vibe off of and we would contribute like we're arranging this with her you know we're like building up the parts and in the studio too in the beginning before there was like a, an actual like produce per, someone wearing a producer hat it was that kind of vibe like well what do you think i should play well what should i play like oh that sounded good cool let's do another take or a lot of like we're all playing at once you know like full band style even though it was a solo artist um like the first two records are mainly just like was that take good? Oh, you're rushing a little bit. Okay, you know, like no clicks. And so it was like, it was collaborative. I wouldn't say like we were doing, um, I wasn't doing any like lyric or, or melody writing with her. Um, there was a time later when I did, was getting into production that I was like writing with her a little bit on the tour bus when I was like trying to get my chops together. And like, I would send her some ideas and like, we would sort of go back and forth. But like, I mean, to Ingrid's credit, again, she's an incredible writer, and most of her catalog is all written solely by her. I mean, it's 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 insane. And 
um, some of the later stuff is, is co-writes because she like got into it. She was, she was enjoying it, I think. But in the beginning, she was just like, you know, just sort of had a lot to say and was really, really good at it. Um, yeah, she's really talented, great singer, great performer, just a, all <clears throat> total package, really great. Yeah. So as when I did sub for you, um, you were, as far as the live show, you were running the show. You're doing tracks and Ableton Live and all that stuff. So you're not just just throwing down. You're actually running the tracks and all that stuff. So what what's that like? Was that something you had done before, or was that something you took on because she wanted you to do it? Uh, we made an album called Human Again, and it was probably the most ambitious, like forward production sounding album yet. There's there's like string i mean she's ha she had string arrangements before but it was you know programming multi guitars some songs had two different basses playing david khan produced it so there was like you know a level of electronic stuff that was in there that she never really had before and one day she was like i think i want to have tracks now and and can you do it and i was like yeah i had no i'd never touched a daw i'd never like run right. any tracks i didn't know what that was like but i just got Ableton and I, I like had several freak outs and I like called some friends that were running like I don't know if you know Adam Criscow another he's a great drummer he he's he he moved to LA and started playing with like Sia and um Tegan and Sarah and just a bunch of great artists I, I went to him and I was like how do you do this because he was running tracks for Sia at the time this is before Sia became like the multi-platinum Sia. She was still like indie Sia. Yep, I'm familiar you know, with indie Sia, yeah. All that it's, stuff it's is so good. Yeah. He was out there with her and he's like, I, I mean, he was like, I, here's what I can show you, but I don't really know because someone set it up for me, but here's what I do. I was just, I, so it was a total crash course, like me trying to teach myself how to do this, getting a little bit of guidance, but it was still new for like, at the time, like for, 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 for like a drummer to, pick that up you know I didn't really I went around me and it was like they they had other texts that were building these sessions for them I didn't really there wasn't it wasn't like like now it's like you need that skill I, I mean you could go step by step what do you need to be a a pro drummer you need to know how to run tracks you need to know how to incorporate electronics into your setup you need to sometimes be the only member of the band because there's a vocalist and you probably might need to run vocal effects for them too I mean right but anyway at the time yeah I was like I don't know what I'm doing I'm freaking out. Um, and I, t I, I had a tour that I was supposed to do right before the Ingrid rehearsal started. So I was like on a van tour with another artist with my rig that I didn't even know how to put together. I had way too many things. That, 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 and I would just be like freaking out in my own. I would sometimes pay for my own hotel room to just like set it up and like freak out for the whole night. So no kidding. Dark, dark time. <laughs> Crash course in, in live. Man, that's yeah. Great. Were you at least getting some YouTube tutorials or what? Those are there, great. There weren't as many as there are now. Again, right. it was like it was like how to run tracks for gospel for like church gigs, and and they had very specific things. But I didn't even know. Like now, the controllers too are so great. I had like a PD uh, SX, or I had I had a the Roland's pad, and I was like, maybe I'm gonna run the tracks with this pad. But there was no, I remember trying to find a YouTube video that was going to show me how to use that as a controller, but there wasn't really anything. You solid. should have called me. I actually figured I that one out. I actually figured that part out. Like, oh, you know, man, you probably were living in that world and I was over there just drowning. Should have called me. <laughs> yeah, but then when I got on the gig with to cover you with, yeah. for Ingrid, I was like, I saw your rig and I was like, yeah, let somebody else run that. I'm just going to play the drums for this one. Yeah. I don't even like, yeah, it was probably like the worst way you could route that stuff at the time. Like, I, you know, I, I don't even... But I just wimped me. out. I just wanted to play, you know, just not have to worry too much about all that. stuff. I didn't want to have all that on my, but um, yeah, but that's cool. And like you just said, that's very important. I think, especially like nowadays, you have to know how to run tracks. You have to be comfortable playing with them. Mm -hmm. And um, it's sort of looked on as a, a skill set that you got to have. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think that's like to be a drummer, to be a working drummer right now, <clears throat> excuse me, like you need, you need, that skill set. There's no other way around it. I would never send someone out into the world without that knowledge, you know. And, or, and not only that, but it's, I mean, obviously more now it's, it's more common. Um, but 
it was uh, it helped me with a lot of the electronic gigs just the being able to you know play precisely with tracks is a whole other skill set than um totally you know than a lot of things just really being able to play something that complements what's already there is is a whole other thing um so that's cool so you uh that that's really funny i didn't know that you did <laughs> you you did the crash course in ableton live so now you feel comfortable with it now you you down with ableton you got i'm down with ableton and that i mean learning that learning how to use the daw and then eventually getting so comfortable that i was bored with it and just i would i would take it on the tour bus and that's what helped me like start writing on my own and producing tracks and like getting creative with it and not just like having it be the bane of my existence but you know like working with it and like kind of owning it so yeah i'm grateful again you know if it wasn't for ingrid i don't even know if i would have gotten into that you know i started out like i want to be a drummer hit the things you know buy the gear like rock out whatever be you know be as good as that at that as i could be but you know if ingrid hadn't been like we're doing tracks now you know i don't know if i would ever have had that you know because i still know drummers that came up with me and maybe were around that time that never really that sort of reluctantly got into it and like slowly but i had to like like our first gig with the tracks was like two thousand three thousand people you know and i'm like this is my first time running tracks and this is our first time as a band playing with tracks live like damn yeah you know? that's nerve-wracking nice <laughs> Trial by fire, but you but you pulled it. You lived to tell the tale, so yeah, must yeah. have gone well. With it. That's awesome. So, um, okay, so then we go, and you were uh, out with Ingrid. Ingrid's doing well. You're touring a lot, and your name was starting to get out. Of, even uh, I remember in the drumming community, yeah, didn't you win like modern drummer, best up and coming drummer, or something like that? Yeah, I was, you know, trying to put myself out there, like as a drummer's drummer too, and and get into this sort of marketing aspect of it or branding you know I wanted to be like the I you know I, I grew up <clears throat> with modern drummer you know I was I had stacks of those things like um every issue so that was like a goal and yeah I got I, I won um as a reader's poll and I was like lobbying really hard trying to get everybody to vote for me that was like huge for me you know it's like a huge honor and Absolutely. Um, you know, I did, I did uh, have an interview in the magazine later on, which was like crazy, you know, um, Mark Giuliano was on the cover. So that was really cool too. It was like, Oh, you know, nice. um, I had J.R. Robinson on the cover of mine. Not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I know I'm with you, man. Modern drummer for me, when I got into, into modern drummer was just like a whole other, other thing and i remember you winning um i remember voting for you too because oh, you did you, lobby sir. hard and, and i was <laughs> i appreciated that you know yeah um so cool so yeah you're getting attention from other musicians producers drummers uh things are looking good now along comes l king yeah so so l what i was playing with i was doing tracks for these this production team and they would call me up just hey are you free uh next or tomorrow to like come in and play on some stuff yes i'm free and then they would send me some tracks and sometimes the you know there was vocals sometimes there wasn't but i knew these these guys were uh doing you know a lot of heavy sessions you know with huge pop stars and things so you know I, it was always something pretty big and surprising um I got in there and I was doing some ghost tracks for a very big band. And they they said, oh, do you know who this singer is? There was a duet, there was the band and then this other female artist. And it was it turned out to be Elle. And I was like, I don't know who she is. They're like, oh, you should, you should listen to her, she's great. I mean, at the time, Elle was a, an independent underground songwriter. Um, I think she had moved, she was living in LA for a while, moved back to New York and, um, I found her email and I reached out to her. I was like, hey, I heard you on this track that I was playing on today. Um, you're really great. And she was like, oh, like we sort of were emailing and she knew me from a couple of the artists that I was playing with, including Ingrid and another artist, Jenny Owen Youngs. She's like, I love Jenny. Um, that's so cool. I hope I can tour one day, uh, you know, and then I was like, well, do you, do you have a drummer? Do you need a drummer? Which is like my MO then it was like, I'll play with you. You know, if you're good, if you're good, I'll play with you if you need a drummer. 
And um, we ended up like meeting up for French fries. And she was like, I just got signed to a record deal. And I was like, congrats. And um, she, yeah, she signed with RCA like that day. Just wow. coincidentally, we, the day we were hanging out. And she at the time was like still, uh, she still had different drummers that she was like working with, but I was just like trying to get to know her and like be a, a person. Cause she was like incredible on the track. I mean, if you, anyone's ever heard her sing, she's just crazy. I and mean, one of the best I think uh, yeah. around. And um, so, you know, we, we eventually were, were hanging and then this is like a weird New York connection. Her manager at the time was uh, a, he produced uh, some Regina Spector stuff. And he was also like an a and at Sire for a while and I knew him from playing a gig with Regina like years ago in college. And okay. we had like a weird hang where we were hanging out with the Smashing Pumpkins in the basement of some uh, New York dive bar and like watching them play like handball with the strokes. It was okay. like a, one of those, and it's just me and the, and, the guy, and the manager like against the wall, like this is pretty freaking weird, right? He's like, yeah, anyway, <laughs> just like surreal moment. <laughs> And so I was like, oh, he's your manager. So El, so this, this producer, it was her, her manager at the time. Okay. So I knew him, he's also a drummer. And so eventually I got the call like, hey, do you wanna maybe like audition for Elle? It wasn't really an audition, it was just like a hang, like come over to her, her apartment with like her pet rats and like this like really small drum set that the manager had and like, just like jam a little bit and like, like oh great, you're hired and then you know, she was on the label, but she wasn't, um, you know, things weren't, she didn't have a single out or anything out really yet. So we started kind of playing Rockwood and stuff. But that's okay. like, that's the sort of genesis of, <laughs> of the L King connection. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> Regina Spector, I didn't know you played with Regina as well. It's funny because you were just mentioning how you, um, you emailed Elle as soon as you you got back or from the session. Like you, mm -hmm. you you took the initiative to reach out and send the email, which is super important. You know, I don't know how many people have asked me how you get a certain gig, and it can be just as simple as that as you know sending an email to somebody. And um, I think when Regina first kind of started getting uh, notoriety, um, like she was VH1 Artist of the Month and all this stuff, and. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I was digging what she was doing and I remember going to her website and looking for her management and all this stuff and I was gonna gonna reach out and email the manager but I was like well my website's kind of crappy so I you know I'll, I'll wait until I fix it and make it a little better and like the next week I was playing a Russian wedding in New Jersey of all things <laughs> yeah. and um, I just I was up all night the night before making these printing these stupid business cards like remember the those little templates that you could put in oh my god the printer i have make, that yeah yeah make yeah. your construction paper business cards right and, and so i i was stayed up and i'm making these these business cards and i got all these cards on the thing and i'm running late to go to this horrifying wedding in new jersey <laughs> and uh and I'm leaving, and I'm like, oh, I forgot my business cards. And I was like, oh, who cares? Who the hell am I going to meet at a Russian wedding in New Jersey, right? So yeah. fast forward, I, you know, the two-hour miserable drive, and I'm in there, and I'm playing, like, you know, the horror in the beginning, and that, 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 that. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking, and out on the dance floor is Regina Spector, like, dancing <laughs> around with everybody else. And I was yeah. like, I must have played one too many horrors, and maybe I'm hallucinating at this moment, but right. I'm pretty sure that's Regina Spector. And of course, nobody in the band knew who she was. And mm -hmm. so I went up and talked to her and, and, uh, and, and the first thing she says is, do you have a business card? Oh, man. <laughs> she's like, no. Yeah. So I go up and grab, you know, whatever napkin and scribble my, my info on the thing and give it to her and all that. Um, <laughs> but it was just, it's a trip. She's, she's another one who's just an amazing piano player, songwriter, super talented yeah. person. And, and only, uh, a New York City area type of story, right? These mm -hmm. types of people we run run into just don't. I know. Yeah. So cool. So Al, now, so now you're starting to. Um, you were saying that you were working with production companies and stuff, mostly as a drummer, though, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah, go ahead. I was just going to ask, did you start because I saw that you do beat programming and stuff like that and production in general? 
So yeah. how'd you get into that? Yeah, that was uh, that was sort of a product of being really bored on the road. You know, at that point, I was touring probably six months out of the year. You know, and you can have you can visit really cool places, but like a lot, you get into that like sort of flow where it's just like every day is the same except you know where the bathroom's in a different place it's a different coffee shop the hotel's a little different and you know you're sort of like on these days off you're like well i you know i don't know i'm not going to go out on the town like i already did that this afternoon so i i was you know with my computer and just started to get into ableton a little bit more and then i would just kind of reach out to to like songwriters and musicians that I knew back home in New York um, that I connected with through drumming and was like, I'm trying to collaborate. I just, I think I was just saying, I want to collaborate and like make something, you know, I was, I had no aim of like, I want to be a producer or I want to be, you know, a career songwriter or anything. I was just like, I want to do something creative. And with this new tool that I'm like learning and have fun while I'm doing it. Cause I kind of learn best that way anyway, just by doing something. Yeah. Um, that's sort of why the nightmare at, at the beginning was like, I can't, there's no way to do this without doing it, you know, or learn it without doing it. I can't do it until we're playing. And anyways, but sink or swim, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, during Ingrid tours, I was kind of working on that on the side. And then I'd come to New York and like maybe work closer with some of the people I was collaborating with. And, um, a couple projects I did started kind of getting some legs and, and I started to get, you know, I got a publishing uh, ad administration deal out of that project, you know, work, um, you know, from the exposure from that. And then I started actually like doing writing sessions and, and people would approach me to produce songs for them. And so that like beast was starting to grow while I was still touring with Ingrid, like she would still have me do to, you know, touring dates and Elle was starting to tour because she put out her album and now we're on the album cycle. And guess what? X's and O's became like a number one rock song. And then it was a crossover pop thing. So now we're doing, it's the same kind of thing. It's like all the late night shows, the morning shows, the like, I mean, it, and Elle was different from Ingrid in that Elle, Elle's team was like, we're going to say yes to everything. We're going to just go. Which, you know, I feel like the best thing is some kind of balance. You know, Ingrid was a little more reluctant, like didn't really want to like burn out on the road. She's a homebody. Elle was like, this was her first time doing this stuff. She was like early, younger than me, you know, like she, she's like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's like live life. So I'm, meanwhile, I'm like trying to finish productions like on the tour bus and in hotel rooms. And like, when I come home, like, do that so it became like this like balancing act that was kind of working for a while but it was really like there definitely came a point where i couldn't really be l's drummer and be ingrid's drummer like i set out to be in the beginning with everybody and i have this like career starting from for me and the collaborators that i'm working with you know so that was a bit of a crossroads Thing that kind of that's a tough thing i know I, you know when you got to make that sophie's choice right is that, <laughs> is that the movie yeah. i don't even know i just Probably. know that it means that you got to make a horrifying decision between some right. things and, and at the same time you feel worse because you know people are relying on you and you don't want to let them down right oh man i have so much guilt about that always so that was like probably weighing heavier on me than it should have because everybody is so nice i mean Elle is a sweetheart they're all everybody's a friend um too i'm lucky uh and you know they all knew what was going on i wasn't like hiding it or you know they, they would see stuff come out and there was press behind some of the stuff um so yeah when it came time to kind of talk it out it was like yeah you, you know and l was l was like still in like a record cycle it was it was sort of like like i didn't bow out of any dates i didn't like cancel but i definitely but there was definitely like a break where it was like okay we're about to like reload with like a whole new schedule and it was like okay i think it's time you know you need to have your you need a drummer you're a rock band like right. you know, we talked about it totally cool and i think with ingrid it was like well she was sort of things were sort of dying down a little bit more this is like at, well 
you know, after the album cycle for the hit song. And, you know, it was like a good time to kind of like make that transition. And for me personally, I was definitely just like, you know, I toured, you know, you, you tour enough, you kind of hit the same places over and over again. And then you hit them over and over again with another artist. And you're like, I like this. I like the music, but the lifestyle of touring for me was not as appealing. And especially when I had this other thing at home, it was starting to happen with the music, you know, with production. It was super exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. That's super, that super exciting is the word for it. Yeah. Um, it's good to have that many options, um, good options. So the, um, when you said the transition, so you didn't really transition from one to the next or pick or anything. You just basically decided that you were going to focus maybe more on, on the production side of things. Am I getting that right? Is Yeah. I kind of, I, I tend to like go where I'm needed or go where something is happening, you know? Uh, and in that case, you know, I, I don't think I would have, transitioned if the production work and the songwriting work wasn't there wasn't momentum behind it I think I would have just stayed uh you know stayed put um you know in, in terms of being Elle's drummer and Ingrid's drummer and and like you know session drummer and like stayed on that course like 110 percent um but it's just because this sort of there was like a pull or a push into that direction you know, it kind of morphed into that. And even like now in what I do, which is sort of a hybrid of managing and consulting with artists and helping them build their brands and helping them uh, sort of express their voice as an artist. And, you know, that's all kind of like, to me, there is like a straight, a through line between being Ingrid's drummer and then being like, you know, on an email chain with, managers like trying to negotiate like splits for a song or something i think there, there's some i mean those are two sort of bookends but like you know it, i i tend to just evolve or try to evolve with where things are taking me um and you know i think that's also just like the nature of what of the business and like this like kind of craft and art form that we're doing it's like it it it, it you know, the, its place in the world is evolving so much. The platforms are evolving. Um, you know, obviously we're listening on our, on our uh, cell phones instead of record players. You know, I mean, record vinyl is still huge, but you know, things things are changing so much that I'm trying to live with that change and like, you know, sort of be in the middle of it as much as I can. Yeah, um, well, I mean, it sounds like you're right up in the front. You know, you're not even in the middle, you're on the front and that's great. You see where it's going and you're adapting and you, like you said, um, <clears throat> feeling what uh, feels natural to you. If the production thing pulled you in and all that and it's it's doing well, then that's the natural course that it should should go, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that's exciting. So when you. Um, how much drumming are you doing these days? Well, it's weird because like I for a long time, like let drumming kind of go to the wayside because again it wasn't like i was being pulled there and i wasn't putting myself out there and and it's difficult you know, to play drums in new york city yeah yeah it turns out i mean yeah. it's just it's a very specific specialized thing i think now with the way music has evolved and with how you know the scene has shrunk and if you're going to hire a drummer to play on your record that's a lot of money and it's a specific sound and you know do you have that budget and do you really need live drums you know so and to play a show too it's like i mean well now it's it's we're obviously in a different situation but you know t typically it's yeah it's so specialized and specific um you know and i was just doing a lot of electronic music you know pop music and stuff and like not really um needing to even play on my own productions um and yeah just and even the people that would call me to do stuff were still calling me but just there's way less work you know than there was it's just, it's a combination of things but um but now i it's weird i think like in this like covid situation and i think in my life i'm i'm finding drums to be like a, a just a joyful thing and just purely like that's the roots like that's what 
the only reason why I picked up drums is because it was exciting to me and like it's something I wanted to do mm-hmm. not because anything was pulling me or pushing me it was just like this feels good this is exciting you know this, that's where the drive came from you know I didn't have anybody saying like you're going to grow up to be a, a drummer some you know there was it was all just I, I was drawn to it and so now when I play um, I'm I am actually like it's weird like around the time you know you reached out I think I was like making a decision that I'm going to put myself out there more as a drummer again and I've started to do that and I have sessions booked and I'm like tracking out of a studio space that I work out of in Brooklyn and like trying to you know not be lazy not not like I was lazy before but like actually if if a if I can put live drums on a recording that I'm producing. I'm going to do it because I can, and it's fun, you know, like, and it it hasn't uh, gotten in the way creatively yet. You know, no one said, Hey, I don't like these drums, you know? Um, So it's, it's like, it's just, so now it's maybe more from a place of like, just pure fun and pure enjoyment and not so much career driven, uh, you know, trying to feed that beast. So it's kind of yeah, nice. nice. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's good when you can, uh, I feel you, at least with me for a while, when it was, you have to pay the bills as a drummer, as a full-time drummer, it definitely sucks a lot of the fun out of it. You know, when, you, when you've got to make sure that the, you keep the lights on and mm-hmm. um, you got to live in a place that's like New York, that's expensive. And uh, sometimes the gigs that you have to do aren't always the most fulfilling gigs and all that. So it's, it's you know, um, staying focused and all that. And, and uh, being able to sit down on the drums and go, oh, yeah, this is, this is fun. Like, this is why I got into the drums to begin with is because it's fun to play them. So it's good to take, get out of the pressure cooker once in a while and recapture that. So I can totally relate to that. Um, so when COVID hit, did it... Um, break any plans you have anything uh tours or anything booked or what happened um for me like you know some of the artists that i'm working with on the more like strategic uh managerial side of things you know they had shows that were booked and then pushed back and then pushed back and then canceled one artist had a tour like her first opening tour that was pushed back and pushed back and is technically still being pushed back um you know, I was really uh, making a big effort to do more like outside songwriting sessions, you know, work, I wanted to work with new people, you know, not just my circle, Um, you know, because I think as a musician, you tend to like gravitate towards your circle and which can be great. But, you know, I was trying to branch out of my writing circle. And so I was, that was obviously put to a halt. Um, And just like, for me, you know, watching the artists around me sort of be very disoriented and like, where do we, not just like, how do we transfer everything and our whole message and, and, and uh, output to online, but with like Black Lives Matter and like the, the civil, uh, you know, social justice stuff going on, then it was also like, well, how do I even have a voice in this climate, you know? Now I'm now I can't play shows. I only have my Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, um, live streaming. But now there's this thing that's like bigger than all of us, and I'm supposed to promote my single. You know, it's like how do I fit into that? So there was a lot for me. It was a lot of like those conversations and strategizing and pushing things back, rethinking, and just like a lot of deep <laughs> kind of diving of like well, what really does matter to this artist? You know, what matters to their vision and, and what's the most important thing? You know, how do they contribute to this or or um, fit into this or around it? Um, you know, this this being like social justice and and, and, and what's going on with the, the political climate. And then also we're not gonna tour for the foreseeable future. So we gotta keep moving <laughs> somehow, you know, and those are still questions, right? Like nobody really knows. I, I talk to booking agents pretty regularly. They don't know, you know, just feeling it out. So that's kind of, it's kind of been where I'm at. I think so many people are like that, are there. And I think a lot of musicians, especially, it's super incredibly devastating and hard. Um, 
to do this. And I, I'm, I know I'm fortunate that I, I'm not, my stake is not 100% in the live music thing. So I don't, I didn't feel it on that level directly, but man, it's rough. Yeah, I'm with you there. Um, well, so as far as going forward, like you said, it's tough to know. We're, we're trying to sort of navigate uncharted waters. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. How do you feel going forward? Do you think that, um, that things are going to come back full on? Do you think that things are going to be different? Uh, we're going to, I don't think that the live streaming thing is entirely going to go away. I think that might be just a new facet that we might deal with. But what, what do you think about that? What yeah, I think everything. Here? Yeah, I, I think that's totally, I, I agree with that. I think that um, live streaming and, and online engagement is, is like, proven to be a very vital and powerful tool and connector for artists. I mean, it was before, but now I think we see that like quality engagement is actually like, you know, cannot just move the needle, but like really be fulfilling and, and powerful, um, you know, beyond music promotion. Um, I think we need that. Uh, and I think, I don't think things will be the same, but we were always in flux. Like the music industry is constantly changing anyway. So I think maybe this will get us somewhere <laughs> you know like uprooting us into this you know new planter like a little bit quicker than we would have been uh would have get, gotten there but i think that um it, it's it's it does create a lot of opportunity and a lot of artists i'm, I'm working with now you know it, it is very difficult I, I know for them to see it that way because they're in the trenches trying to like put out their music with what we got now um but i i and it's hard for me to see too but i do think that it's just going to be there's going to be a lot of innovation and people have to create these workarounds so how do you connect with people how do you connect your music to people you go, we have more tools than we've ever had we also have more roadblocks than we've ever had um in so many ways uh but you know the music is still there people are still extremely talented the talent is there um you know, and the need is there. Like, I think when, when anything starts to become safe again, people are gonna come out and support music. Like people are gonna wanna see live shows and play live shows. I was sitting like in, you know, in front of my computer the other day thinking like, man, I would give anything to play at Rockwood tonight. Like I would like, if someone was like, you know, you can go to Rockwood at three in the morning and play a show, you won't get paid, and like, maybe there'll be five people there. I would go, I would play Russian wedding music at Rockwood at 3 a.m., you, know? <laughs> you know? You know, and that's that's where I'm at. I can't imagine where other people are at. No, know? I'm I'm with you, I'm with <laughs> you there. So I just wanna talk about another thing um, b that you mentioned, the, the whole, this whole management thing that you're doing. It mm -hmm. sounds really interesting. So it's like a management sort of, you're developing, working with artists, development and, and branding and all that. Are you doing that? Um, are you like taking clients or are you just working with a specific group of people? How's that working? Um, I'm working with a couple of people like exclusively where, you know, it's a little more traditional of like a management setup where I've been with them for a long time. And I'm also on the creative side with them too, in some ways, things just evolved where, you know, there wasn't someone to take the reins that, you know, there wasn't like a, a strategy, um, you know, and I felt very connected to the, the music and those people. So I wanted to step in and, and do what I can. And then, you know, with some other people, it's more like maybe consulting is the word or, or like being a part of their team in a way that's like, I'm like a auxiliary tool, you know, I can, I can help you with your branding or not, you know, I could, I can, I can work on contracts and help you get, you know, your deals taken care of, or maybe you know, I'm more focused on the day to day, like, what do you, how do you get this uh, EP together and, and organize the producers and the writers and, um, you know, so it's a little bit of everything. Uh, and I'm, I'm starting to like grow that a bit more. Um, because I mean, it's really exciting to me. And I always had a tendency, you know, even with with going back to Ingrid, like we would make 
like record a, a, a CD. They're like, well, how are we gonna like put this out? Like, who's gonna listen to it? How do we promote this? Like, what do we gotta do uh, to get it heard? And you know, now it's just being involved uh, with that type of work on a deeper level is really appealing to me. Gotcha. That's yeah. excellent. So um, anything coming up that you are excited about musically or anything that you want to talk about that we can look forward to? Sure. Uh, I mean, this year I have a last year I was working really hard with a few artists uh, on, um, you know, some collaborations and features, you know, uh, and so a lot of that's going to start coming out this year, which is really exciting. Um, where I'm co-writing and co-producing some of it, um, you know, and I, on my socials, I post everything, you know, as much as I can be, get away with without being annoying to myself or other people. Um, and, you know, I'm starting to plant the seeds of, of drumming more. So who knows, you know, I, I, there's, I'm just letting everybody know, like, yeah, I want to play drums. <laughs> so cool. who knows? go fill up your date book, man, because I need some gigs so I can sub for you again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, you, you got the call. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. I can't thank you enough for doing this. It's great to talk to you because you were, you give such a unique perspective. Um, like I said, in the, the way that you came up and just the way that you go with life and you know, you got a great attitude and, and I just in knowing you and all that you bring is always just real, you know, you're always like just a real dude and, uh, and a talented cat. And I just am thankful to have you here and sharing your story and what, what's happening. So, um, just to, it's your website is Elliot Jacobson.com or yeah, Elliot dash jacobson.com because elliot uh, dash don't say, forget the dash dash is or the hyphen maybe it's hyphen. that i don't know yeah that's that's important yeah i guess <laughs> it's generational maybe yeah dash yeah. hyphen right. and you're on instagram you're on facebook you're on all of the above and people can check yeah. out what you're doing and keep up with you yeah that's it you're looking you looking forward to the bills game you know what man i'm a terrible bills fan i know things are <laughs> we gotta go <laughs> No, I'm looking for my Bills hat. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I knew it would come in handy. Oh, yeah, man. That's what I, you know, I should wear that around New York. That would be, that's what I need. I need to go. Damn, people, people love Bills fans. They really do. I see Bills fans around town a lot. Actually. Yeah, it's like, um, we always get that sympathy thing going, I think. You mm -hmm. know? Plus, we got great fans. You got to admit, we have great fans. We like, you know, yeah. we put out a, a injured quarterback and then we like, donate millions of dollars to his favorite charity you know mm -hmm. it's just typical buffalo but anyways <laughs> thank you so much again it's been an absolute pleasure everybody watching make sure you follow this guy um i'm sure you're going to be continuing to do big things and i can't wait to see what's up thanks so much elliot and we will see you next time take care thanks all right